Good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you're here today. Welcome to First McKinney. And we especially want to welcome you to our church today if you're here with us for the first time. So welcome to you. Uh, we are so glad that you are with us, and we would love to get to know you. If you are a guest today, you could text the word guest to 96123. We'll text you back, and uh, we really just want to encourage you and pray for you and serve you any way that we can. I uh, would love to get to know you after the service. We are so glad that you're here. And this morning, to start our service, we have a baptism. So look up right behind me. Good morning, church. Um, this morning, I have the privilege uh, to baptize my friend Ian. Uh, Ian's in seventh grade, so he has come. Uh, he's come. He's making decisions. So, you sit right here. Um, so Ian, he made this decision a little while ago, and so um, we're going to talk about it. So, Ian, what sh what word did you write down on your shirt? Uh, destiny. Destiny. Why did you write destiny on your shirt? Uh, to see what God has in store for me for the future. Amen. Well, Ian, this morning for baptism, you were saying that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Do you, you agree to that? Yes. Yes? All right. Well, Ian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You're ready to walk a new life. What an awesome way to begin our service. You know, baptism is a picture of what Christ has done for us. Uh, baptism doesn't save us. Uh, that good looking young guy, he was already, believe, uh, already a, a believer the moment that he placed his faith in Jesus. That's what saved him. But baptism is just a picture that tells the world that, that we have been buried with Christ, uh, that our sin is gone, that we've been resurrected with Christ, raised to walk in a new life. And uh, today is a unique day. We're going to spend th this morning in prayer, a little different service than we normally have. And um, really today we want to focus our hearts and minds on who God is and all that God has done, that he is God and that we are not, that we were not created for our glory, but that we were created for his. Because all of us, naturally, we tend to be glory thieves we want the glory. And one of, one of the ways that this manifests itself in my life is um, in how easily aggravated I get when I'm driving and I'm behind a really slow driver. But interestingly, the same thing can happen. I get just as aggravated when someone drives by me really fast, acting as if they own the place. So isn't it interesting, you ever thought about that, people are always driving too fast or too slow. Why is that? Because we are the standard by which everyone else uh, should learn how to drive, right? We are the center of our own universe. We all wake up each day with, uh, even uh, subconsciously, with the thought that the world revolves around me. We think about, what am I going to do with my day today? And everything else, everybody else just needs to fall in line but that's not how God created us to be. God created us not for our glory, but for his. And so Isaiah 43, it says, everyone who is called by my name, this is the Lord speaking, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So many of us as kids, we didn't grow up singing, I've got the whole world in my hands. No, we grew up singing, he's got the whole world in his hands. And that's what we wanna to acknowledge together today, that God is God and that we are not. So let's stand together and let's sing. Let's raise our voices. Sing uh, these ancient words with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And praise Him all creatures here
restore every heart that's broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your prayer. together that you're the one who created us and and breathe life into our nostrils your word tells us that that you gave us the breath of life and so when we worship when we praise you we're just giving you back uh, the breath that you gave to us we're just giving you back the praise that alone belongs to you and we just confess that we have far too often given our hearts and minds 
uh, to other things, to lesser things. We've done that this week, that we've, we've made ourselves God and we've worshiped and served uh, created things rather than you, the creator of all things. Forgive us, Lord. Our hope today is, is not in our ability to, to worship you perfectly on our own. It's not in, in our ability to, to do a lot of good things in order for you to love us. Our hope is that you saw us in all of our brokenness and all of our shame and you sent Jesus to be our rescue, to die in our place. So we praise your name, Jesus. We cling to you, our hope. Be glorified today in this place. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated. I need to start by saying I feel better than I sound, all right? Can I, uh, the, the, the virus is behind me, not in front of me. I, just sometimes your voice takes a little longer to return. Y'all notice that on occasion? Back to Justin's uh, illustration earlier in the service about drivers. If different services went different speeds, this would be a slow moving service on purpose. As we jump into 2024, we don't want to just jump in. We want to be intentional as a church to spend time talking with God as we move into next year. Many in our culture over the next 24 hours or maybe have been working on this for a week or two are going to have New Year's resol what do you call them? resolutions yes or goals here's a little video that one on our team put together earlier this week maybe for you uh, your resolutions from last year need to have some adjustments uh, and so that you can check off the list uh, ever ever notice that maybe what you've set out to accomplish on your goal list doesn't always turn out the way that you initially <laughs> intended Y'all yeah, see the adjustments? Yeah, can you read even what they're doing? It's pretty funny. What I'm hoping that we'll get to do uh, together as a church today is to talk with God. And as we talk with God, I think some of us run to just prayer requests. And we're going to spend some time with prayer requests today. But before we get there, slow moving service, I want us to remember the year that we've just gone through. If you have a Bible, I want to invite you to turn to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4. The book of Deuteronomy is really a, a recording of a sermon that Moses gave to the people of Israel when they were moving into something new. In fact, more than just a new year, they were moving into a new land and what Moses does in Deuteronomy is he prompts the people of Israel to remember chapter 4 specifically is a chapter calling them to obedience and if you want to think about maybe what's a good resolution for you next year obedience should be high on our list not because we need to earn God's favor but if we believe in a God who knows everything and loves us then we learn that what he has for us is good for us and glorifying to him. And he's calling the people of, of Israel to obey. And in the middle of this chapter, calling them to obey, he reminds them that they can talk to God, that they are close to the God that they worship. And for us as followers of Jesus, it's even closer than the cloud that the people of Israel have been following because We've now been forgiven through the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit lives in our lives and we can talk to him directly. So pick up with me in verse seven. Here's what we read. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we called upon him? Is God here today? Yes. When we talk to God, we're not talking to a distant God. We're talking to a God who's here in the room with us. And through the Holy Spirit and the blood of Christ, we get to be close to. 
verse eight, and what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Verse nine, only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you, now notice he builds up to what he's about to say by saying you need to be careful to do this. This is not going to happen without us being intentional to do this. And what he's going to call us to do, his people, Israel, to do, and I think we can learn from this example, is to remember. Uh, the word remember, sakar in Hebrew, is a repeated command over and over and over in the first five books of the Old Testament. It was really important for God that his people remembered what has happened to them. He says it here in the negative, only take care, keep your soul diligently, lest you, what? Forget the things your eyes have seen, unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. It was so important for God's people that they didn't just go through life and experience God and walk away not remembering. What he prompts them to remember in chapter four is both positive and negative things. He prompts them to remember bad things like when they worshiped a golden calf. He says, don't forget that. He also talks about the positive things that God delivered them out of slavery in Egypt. Don't forget that. He says he wants them to remember. How does that relate to us today? Well, maybe before jumping in to think about what we're gonna ask God for next year, we need to stop and not forget what's happened in our lives this year. Michael Hyatt, a, a famous Christian leader, used to be president of Thomas Nelson Books. He coaches high-level leaders around the world. And he says these words, interesting, by far the most consistent practice of high achievers that they share to set themselves up for a great year is to actually reflect on the current one. Uh, similarly, a, a man by the name of John Maxwell, another leader who coaches leaders in our culture. John Maxwell spends the last week of every year not setting goals for the next year, actually spends the last week reflecting on the previous year. And he says these words, evaluated reflection turns experience into insight. And when you reflect, when you remember, you get to see what God has been doing and teaching you in your life. So maybe you don't have to learn the same lesson a second time or a third time or a fourth time as you reflect and you remember. So here's what I'm gonna prompt you to do. If you have a journal, I wanna invite you to take this out. If you don't have a journal, maybe you have an electronic device that you can put in airplane mode so that you're not interrupted. And I want you to think back on 2023. I want you to, to remember what you've walked through this year, both good and bad, and just make a list. And if you finish your list and you're thinking, what do I do next? Oh, we're gonna take a few minutes doing this. Maybe start thinking, okay, what is it that God was teaching me in those moments? And start to process as we remember what God has done this year. So a journal, maybe your phone in airplane mode, let's together remember what God has taken us through this. We have a God who's close. Don't just do this as an exercise. Do it in conversation with God, prayerfully remembering what he has led you through.
as we continue to remember, I don't want to just move past this moment and say, okay, we spent a few minutes remembering. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a big enough deal for the people of Israel that God multiple times commanded them to put stones on top of each other, not so they'd burn a sacrifice on them, but so they would be stones of remembrance for them, to remind them what God has done. And so I want to invite you as we uh, spend some time right now, we're, we're going to going to have remembrance candles up front that I'll explain in a second. We'll have some songs that we'll sing that will hopefully prompt remembrance Maybe for you, you just need to keep processing, praying, journaling with God. Maybe this needs to be something you need to do over the next 24 hours to really think back on what is it that God has led you through? What is it that he has been showing you and teaching you about who he is as you follow him? Up front, we have candles. And in our services, we'll use candles for different things at different times. Uh, today, our candles are actually candles of remembrance. And specifically, they're here for you as you remember, maybe there's someone that you have lost and you're grieving the loss of someone you love. It doesn't have to be from this last year. We wanna invite you to come forward and there are these big matches that are in the, uh, both sides of the different candle stacks and then there's candles here that you can light. My family, we lost my cousin this year, his name was Keith. And we're going to light the candles in front of our church family just to remember together these people that we love as we spend time in remembrance. So if you've lost someone, I'm going to invite you forward right now to light a candle to remember them as we continue forward in our time of remembrance. So let's all stand together. I will love 
give me wisdom. You know just what to do.
You can be seated. Uh, God is so good to us, so faithful. I'm reminded of uh, this little part of the story uh, by C.S. Lewis, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia. And um, one day, Lucy, one of the children, is walking with Mr. Beaver, and she's yet to meet uh, the ruler of Narnia, who is the godlike figure in C.S. Lewis's work. Uh, and she says uh, to Mr. Beaver that she's looking forward to meeting him. And then Mr. Beaver tells Lucy that, that Aslan is a lion. And she's confused and she says, oh, I thought he would be a man, not a lion. And she says, I would be rather scared to meet a lion. I think all of us would be. And then uh, she says to Mr. Beaver, well, is he safe? Mr. Beaver says back, uh, no, he's not safe. He's not safe, but he's good. And if you think about uh, this lion, Aslan, representing God, the same is true of God. Uh, we all know that living the Christian life uh, is not safe. Being a believer and a follower of Christ does not mean just this safe, easy life. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. Uh, all of us lighting these candles today is a reminder of the pain and the reality of, of death uh, that we each face in this life. And so following Jesus is not safe, but he's good, always. He's always good, always faithful. He's promised that he'll never leave us, and that even through the pain that he's with us and that he's working somehow ultimately for our good. You have a God today who loves you more than you could ever imagine. One of the ways uh, as we end the year uh, that it's good to remember uh, all that God has done in his goodness and his faithfulness is to think about all that he's blessed us with. Uh, the reality is that, that we can't live in our culture today, and maybe no one ever could, uh, without money. Uh, we need to, um, to eat food. Uh, there's nobody usually just trying to give out free food at the grocery stores. We have to pay for that. Uh, we, have, uh, we need to get around, so we have to have transportation. We need clothes to wear. And so um, God gives us, uh, blesses us richly with, with, with financial blessing. And I think if, if you just look at your life and look at this past year, I think you would say that God has been good, um, even at times when things may be uh, difficult financially. He's still good. He's still faithful. And one of the ways that, that we live that out is to give, always to be givers, um, God calls us to, uh, to give in response to all that he's done. Not just give when we feel like we have excess, but to give even when we think we don't. To always be givers and then to watch him bless us and to pour out his goodness on our lives as he always does. So in this moment, you can give. Uh, there's a few ways on the screen you can do that. Uh, let's pray together before Pastor Sam comes back up. Uh, God, we thank you so much for your constant provision in our lives. We've just sung together uh, that all I have needed, thy hand has provided. And you have been so good to us, so faithful. Uh, even in the moments when, when maybe we were in need, you've brought others into our lives, the church even, maybe some in our life group, some in our family who have helped meet the needs that we had uh, because that's who you are. You're, you're the God who takes care of your children. And so God, we give back in response to you. And as we just continue this time of, uh, of just focusing uh, our prayers towards you and, and fixing our minds and thoughts uh, towards Jesus, would you just keep speaking to us and reminding us how much you love us and how you're working in our lives. We trust you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we continue forward in our service, we're gonna transition now from prayers of remembrance to prayers of request. And request prayers we're fairly familiar with. Uh, this last fall, I had the opportunity on D Now weekend to go to some of the host homes and walked into one of the host homes and one of our longtime leaders in our church uh, came out and said, Sam, I am a miracle. 
And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she proceeded to share with me what she had walked through in the previous few months and how God had used your prayers to help miraculously move her from one place to another. And I would love to tell you that God always answers our request prayers with, yeah, I'll do it right now. And but that's not the way he works all the time, right? One of the joys of my position is getting to see that happen on occasion. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says wait. And he teaches us as we remember, sometimes as we continue to walk through those moments. What I want to do is I want to go back real quick to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And I want to look at the opportunity we have to make requests. This is verse 7. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord? Back to Justin's illustration a moment ago of Aslan. This is not just some little God that maybe at one point in time created a bush. This is the creator of the universe, the eternal judge and king that we're talking about here. This is the Lion of Judah. And, and maybe for you, making requests of God is hard just because for you to think about getting close or near to God is difficult. I want to remind you that what Christians believe is not that we have access to God based on our goodness. We have access to God based on how much he loves us and what he has done for us through Jesus. We have a God who in his love and in his grace sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life in our place, to die on the cross for our sin, to overcome the grave, really to rise again, and he's coming back. Because of that, we have a God, the, the Bible says even to the people of Israel, they had a God who was near. We now, even so much more through Christ, a God so near as our God is to us, whenever we, and then here's the request, whenever we call upon him. That word call literally means to summon. And that's just weird to think about sometimes when you think about God. That, that, that we are invited into a relationship with God where we can summon him. What? And so what we're gonna invite here in the room right now is for you to go back to your journal as you were reflecting on this last year, and to not just reflect in conversation with God, but to request, to, to, to really summon the creator of the universe and say, God, I need your help. Maybe, maybe it relates to some of what you've gone through as, as I've spent time processing this last year, some things that God has been teaching me through what he's leading me through is enjoying God and wanting to do that more, being present, saying no, uh, resetting rhythms of rest in my life. But those things are not things that if he's teaching me, he's gonna want me to do by myself, right? Uh, he, he, he knows how weak I am and how weak you are. And he invites you to invite him into your life. And so take a few minutes right now, go back to that journal, Spend a little time in conversation with God now requesting as you remember what he has done.
the leader in our church that had shared with me, Sam, I'm a miracle, didn't point to God just answering her request. She actually pointed to the many in our church that had prayed for her. And one of the beauties of the Christian life is that we have a God who's near, but we don't have to call him alone, that, that we're called to follow him in community. Uh, as we kick off next year, we're actually gonna be spending time looking at what it looks like to live in community. And we'll see that early church in Acts devoted themselves to prayer. It was one of the things that they did in community. And we wanna invite you into that. And so here's several ways that you can connect to that. Uh, the first is through simply just texting in maybe a request that you have. We have prayer teams in our church that would love to pray for you. And so you can text the word prayer to 96123 if you're online today and you want to engage our prayer ministries that way, you can do that. And so, yeah, if you have your phone out, you've been taking notes, you have requests, let us know how we can pray for you. Now, the front line of our prayer ministry really happens in our groups as people get to know you and walk alongside of you. And so... You'll hear more about that in a few minutes. But we're going we're gonna to do something that's actually going to require some braveness in the room. Uh, we're not going to require you to do this, but we're going to invite you into this. If, if you have in your own life a request that you'd love or realize it would be helpful to have people around you to pray for you, we're going to invite you to have the boldness to actually stand where you are so like if this was me right now and maybe I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I have a, a grandchild that is far from God and I would, I would like someone to pray right now for that person to stand up. And so that, that's, that's going to require a little boldness if you would be open to doing that. And then the second thing that require boldness, and again, if you're here and you're not comfortable doing this, that's completely fine. No pressure. But if you feel comfortable then coming around the people that stand, if you would feel comfortable and saying, hey, I want to pray for you, now, that person might say, you know, unspoken, that's okay. But if, if they want to give you details on how to pray, if you would feel comfortable then coming around that person, laying a hand and spending a few minutes here in the room, taking our request to God on the behalf of the people that we are in church with. So if that's you right now, if you would like someone to pray for you, I want to invite you to have the boldness to just stand up where you are and let the people around you pray for you.
so we've taken some time this morning just to be with God. Hasn't it been good? Amen. Just to slow down and commune with God uh, before we get back to the crazy pace and start a new year. Uh, speaking of New Year, this is obviously a time when people do New Year's resolutions, and that's fine. And we're gonna we're gonna eat better, and we're gonna start exercising, and all that good stuff. That's great. It's funny that the Bible actually talks about this in Timothy. First Timothy four eight says that physical training is of some value. In other words, it's not a waste of time to do that. It's probably actually a good idea. But spiritual training, well, that has value for this life and the life to come. In other words, my paraphrase, Chris's paraphrase, would be. That's great to set some physical goals and get in shape and all that good stuff. We should probably do that as Americans. But as a Christ follower, that probably makes a whole lot more sense to maybe set some spiritual uh, resolutions. And so here's our, here's our wish for you. I want you, everybody in this room, I want you to sit in this service next year. And, and when we do that remembrance time, I want you to look back and say, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Look what God did in my life. Um, And so I just want to throw out four just things that you might consider uh, doing. Um, I'm not saying do all four of these, although if God tells you to do it, you should probably do what God says. Uh, I'm just going to throw these out. So if there was ever a time that you were ever going to have your phone out in church, this is the time to do it because I'm going to throw these out and I'm going to give you an easy, easy step towards that. So if you have your phone, you probably want to pull it out. You can text all this stuff to our number, uh, number 96123. So the first one is this. I don't know anybody that's a Christ follower that that walks with God, that God knows their name, (laughs) that is also not a student of God's word. And so the first thing I just invite you into is getting on a Bible reading plan. Now, there's a million out there. You can pick your own, knock yourself out. But I would just invite you to consider doing the one that we're going to do as a church. So if you want to know more about that, you can text Bible to 96123. And I think that's, that's, again, kind of foundational. But God does not just want us to read his word, pray to him, and then just try to do this on our own. Sam just mentioned it a second ago. He designed us to live in community. And so if you are not in one of our life groups, I would encourage you to take this step. I want you to text the word groups to 96123. And start off the year by saying, you know what? This is the year I do that. I'm going to get in a group, and I'm going to experience all that God has for me. When he wants me in a church, I want to experience... Uh, everything he has for me, and that's probably going to come a whole lot more in a group setting. Some of you are, have a plan to read God's word. You don't just get up in the morning and go, you actually have a plan? Some of you are in a life group. That's awesome. Here's what I know of everybody in this room. First Peter 4.10 says that everyone is given a spiritual gift. God has enabled you to do something in the kingdom to help expand the kingdom. And here's the crazy thing. Imagine if I, if just on Christmas morning, I had gotten you a gift, I wrapped it, and I gave it to you, and I set it there in front of you, and you were like, oh, Chris, thanks, this is great. And then you just sat there and kind of looked at me. <laughs> that would be super awkward for both of us, especially me, because I'd be like, I gave you something. I wanted you to use it and enjoy it. Every one of us is given a gift. We're expected to use it, to serve. Jesus said, Jesus said about himself, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life away as a ransom for many. So you're probably really, man, one of the ways you are most like Jesus is when you serve someone else. And so as this year, you say, you know what, I'm going to find a place where I can use this gift that God's given me to bless people and see what God does and how he grows me through it. So you can text the word serve to 96123. And then a final potential thing you might want to consider is, you know, we talk all the time here about disciple making, discipleship, discipleship, making disciples who live and love like Jesus. We think the best place for that to happen is in what's called a D group, but these are intentional disciple making groups. The idea there is that we grow as followers of Jesus, but not only do we grow, we then turn around and learn ways that we can turn around and do this for someone else and do this for someone else and do this for someone else. And this is how the kingdom expands. So maybe you want to find out more about what does it look like to be in one of those. This is the year I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and see what that's all about. So you can text D groups, D groups to 96123. Now, hey, that's just, there's probably more ways God wants to use this this year. That's just four easy little steps. And I mean, really, honestly, you're literally sending a text. I'm not sure how you could do less taking a step. I mean, uh, y'all, are, y'all have heard of this thing called the couch to 5K like if you want to get in shape, they have this, this thing you can look up and it's kind of a thing you, it's called couch to 5K. 
it doesn't start with, hey, day one, go out and run 26.2 miles. Nobody can do that. You just take a little bitty step. In fact, the very first step in, in, in that whole thing is literally downloading the app. That's really all I'm asking you today. Would you consider, we're going to pray here in just a second, I'll give you just a second to say, God, do you have something for me in 2024? Is this, is this one of the ways that I step, is this a doorway I step into this room of blessing that you have for me in 2024? So I want us to pray right now. And here's what I want you to pray. God, what do you have for me? And if he speaks to you on one of these things, then simply just, all you gotta do is send a text to kind of get the ball rolling and have some conversations about that. All right, let's pray together. Father, we, we don't wanna be the same person a year from now as we are today. God, you didn't send your son uh, to rescue us. You didn't send your spirit just so that we could just kind of maintain for the next year, two years, five years, however long you'd leave us here. God, we believe that you're calling us into deeper, deeper relationship. God, we believe you're calling us into an adventure. Not always safe, but exciting. God, you said to us in John 10, 10, that you, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you've come to give us life and life to the full. And God, we want that for everyone in our church, God. So I pray that as we seek you right now, just briefly, that you would speak to us. Is there an area of our life that's not a, we're not 100% satisfied with where we are with you? And would you give us just a little bit of nudge to take a step towards you today by, by sending a text or coming up and talking to one of the pastors afterwards? God, we unashamedly tell you that we want more of you. So help us to make those decisions this morning. God, thank you. So let's stand together one more time. And this will be our closing prayer together this morning.
is not beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Today we're going to close our service just a little different. If you're a minister here in the room, I want to invite you forward to be in front of the stage. Uh, Typically when we end, uh, we like each other and so people just start talking to each other here in the room. But I want to invite you as we close the service today to, to take the conversation out to the hall with other people. And if you want to stay in the room, to continue the conversation with God here in the room. And if you would like someone to pray with you, our ministers are here up front. We would love to pray with you for any reason. If you're online and you'd like to have that conversation again, you can text the word TALK to 96123 or the word PRAYER to 96123. And there are people on our team that would love to connect with you and to pray with you as you land your service today online. So I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you. And if you would like to pray, stay in the room in your seat to do that or to come forward and have a minister pray over you before you go, we want to invite you to that conversation here in the room. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go love your neighbor. Thank you for joining us today for Worship Online. If you're in our area, we want to invite you to come to physically connect to your local church. We would love to help you to live and love like Jesus alongside of others who are doing the same. If you're from outside of our area, can I challenge you to find a local church in your area that's going to preach the Bible and exalt Jesus? Smash the like button, subscribe, share with friends, and turn on notifications if you'd like to stay up to date with us. And thanks again for joining us.